day. For today's guided notes, we will be focusing on lesson 3.6, which is applying rational number operations. Our essential question is how do you use different forms of rational numbers and strategically choose tools to solve those problems? Our first example, we're gonna look at assessing reasonableness and using estimation. John is hanging a picture. He wants to center it horizontally on the wall. The picture is 32 and 1 half inches long and the wall is 120 and 3 fourths inches long. How far from each edge of the wall should he place the picture? Now, we can see in this picture right here that he really wants to have it centered and we know the dimensions of the wall and the picture, so we need to find the length of the wall that's not covered by the picture. So that's here and here. So what I need to do is subtract 120 and 3 fourths minus 32 and 1 half. Now, I know that 3 fourths and 1 half, actually I know 1 half is the equivalent to 2 fourths, and if I take 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, I get 1 fourth. So there I've subtracted my fractions. So now I need to take 120 minus 32. So when I subtract 120 minus 32, I get 88. So the part of the wall that's not covered by the picture is 88 and 1 fourths inches. So now to figure out how to center that, we want to have equal amounts on each side of the, of the picture that he hangs on the wall. So because we want to have it split equally and we have the left side and the right side, I need to divide 88 and 1 fourth inches in half. So 88 and 1 fourth inches divided by 2. Now, if I look at just the whole number, I can take 88 divided by 2. 88 divided by 2, well, that's just half of 88, so that's 44. But now I need to take 1 fourth and divide that by 2. So when I take 1 fourth divided by 2, which is 2 over 1, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 fourth times the reciprocal, which is 1 half. 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 times 2 is 8. So 1 fourth divided by 2 is 1 eighth. So each side, on each side of the picture, he needs to have 44 and 1 eighth inches in measurement. Now, for the third step, I'm going to check for reasonableness using estimation. So when I read this problem, 120 and 3 fourths, to me that's like 121. And then when I read 32 and 1 half, I think that's pretty close to 33. So I'm going to check it by subtracting 121 minus 33. which is 88, and when I take 88 and divide that by 2, I get 44. So to make sure that I'm on the right track, my answer should be somewhat close to 44 inches. And if we look at our actual answer, we have 44 and 1 eighths inches. So I would say that I am correct in my work because my estimation proved that I am close. Now, for our second example, we're going to look at using rational numbers in any form. And as we've talked about in class, we know that rational numbers come in the form of decimals and fractions because we can take a fraction and turn it into a decimal, and we can do the same with a decimal by writing it as a fraction. So we're going to look at this muffin problem. Alana uses one and one-fourth cups of flour for each batch of blueberry muffins she makes. She has a five-pound bag of flour that costs $4.00 and 49 cents and contains 76 one-fourth cup servings. 
How many batches can Alana make if she uses all the flour? How much does the flour for one batch cost? Now, when I read this problem the first time, it sounds like there are a lot of things happening, so I need to try to decompose this or deconstruct this problem so that I can just look at one piece at a time. So my first step is I want to figure out how many cups of flour are in the bag. I know it says that there are 76 one fourth cups, but I want to know how many just cups of flour. So one fourth, I know that there are one or there are, there are four one fourth cups in one cup. And if there are 76 one fourth cups, then I'm going to take 76 and divide it by four because there are four one-fourth cups. Sorry about the announcement, guys. So 76 divided by four. Oops. Don't know where my pen went, guys. There we go. 76 divide that by four. 19. So there are 19 cups of flour in the bag. Now, using that 19 cups, I can determine how many batches she can make. So there's 19 cups of flour in the bag, but in the problem, we know that for each batch Alana makes, she uses one and one fourth cup. So now I need to divide 19 by one and one fourth. And when I think one and one fourth, I'm gonna turn that fraction into a decimal. So really I've got 1.25 and I'm gonna divide that by 19. Or excuse me, I'm gonna take 19 and divide it by 1.25. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, our essential question is how to strategically use tools to solve the problems. Now, I know in class we've talked about not using calculators, but there is sometimes an appropriate time and place, and this is one such case. Using a calculator shouldn't be used to mistake what you can do, but merely as a tool to help in what you already know. So. I know exactly what I need to do, so now is where I'm going to use my calculator. And in my calculator, I'm going to divide, I'm gonna take 19, and I'm gonna divide that by 1.25, which is one and one fourth, and I get 15.2. So she can make 15.2 cups. Now let's think about that. Or excuse me, not 15.2 cups. 15.2 batches. But now let's think about this. Can you really make two tenths of a batch if you know that the recipe calls for, for instance, an egg in this picture right here, can you take two tenths of an egg? And no, you cannot. So really we would say out of this bag of flour, she can make 15 batches. So now for the next step to find out how many or how much flour does one batch cost. So now I'm gonna take my 15 batches that Alana can make and I'm gonna take and divide that $4.49 which is how much the whole entire bag costs. So $4.49, and I'm gonna divide that by the 15 batches, and that's gonna tell me the cost of one batch. So again, using my calculator simply as a resource tool, 4.49, $4.49 divided by the 15 batches she can make. And I get this number, 0 0.2999. Now because we're talking money, 
we know that we've got the tenths and the hundredths place. So in terms of how much money does one batch of muffins cost, I'm going to round up and say that Alana uses 30 cents. It costs her 30 cents for one batch of muffins. Now what I would like you to do is on the back side of this page, try the your turn questions on your own. And again, simply try them. If you have any questions, make sure that, we, that you mark them down so that we can discuss them tomorrow in class.